Hey, welcome to The Explainer. You know when you're reading a research paper and it feels like there's this secret academic code you're just not in on? Well, today we are cracking that code. We're going to talk about philosophical paradigms, which sounds complicated, I know, but it's really just about the invisible lens that shapes what a researcher looks for and ultimately what they find. So let's just dive right in with a big question. We tend to think of research as this totally objective thing, right? You're just out there collecting facts. But what if the researcher's own beliefs, their whole way of seeing the world, are actually steering the ship? What if they're shaping the discoveries from the very beginning? That's what we're digging into today. And the key idea here is something called a research paradigm. The easiest way to think about it is like a pair of glasses. It's the researcher's worldview, the set of beliefs they wear that focuses and, yeah, sometimes filters everything they see during an investigation. This isn't about one pair of glasses being better than another. It's about knowing which pair you're wearing. So how do you even build one of these worldviews? Well, it turns out every single paradigm, every pair of glasses, is built on the answers to four fundamental questions. Answering these is how a researcher really defines their approach. Let's walk through them. First up, and yeah, it's a big one, what is reality? It sounds like something you'd ask in a late-night dorm room chat, but a researcher's answer to this is literally the bedrock of their entire project. The fancy term for this question is ontology. It's all about the nature of reality. Are you someone who believes there's one single, measurable, objective truth out there waiting to be discovered? Or do you think reality is subjective and that there are tons of different realities, all equally valid, all shaped by our unique experiences. Okay, so once you've landed on what you think reality is, the next logical step is, how do we actually know anything about it? How does knowledge even happen? And that question, how we know what we know, is called epistemology. This is all about the relationship between you, the researcher, and the knowledge itself. Are you just a neutral observer, discovering facts that already exist, or are you an active participant, actually co-creating understanding with the people you're studying? All right, now for a tricky one. We all have values. We all have biases and personal beliefs. So what do you do with them in research? Do you try to pretend they don't exist? Or do you lean into them? This brings us to axiology, the role of values. This question really forces a researcher to be honest. Are you aiming for a completely value-free, objective stance? Or do you accept that that's pretty much impossible, and instead, you openly talk about how your own background and beliefs are shaping your work? And finally, after all that deep philosophical thinking, we get to the practical stuff. Based on how you answered those first three questions, how are you actually going to do the research? This is your methodology. It's your strategy, your game plan. But it's not just the to-do list. It's the logical bridge that connects your big picture worldview to the nitty gritty of collecting and analyzing data. Your answers about reality, knowledge, and values, they all point you down a very specific methodological path. Okay, so we've got our four building blocks. Let's see how they actually come together to create three of the most common paradigms or lenses you'll see out there in the world of qualitative research. First up, we have the positivist lens. Think of a scientist with a powerful telescope. They believe there's one single objective reality out there. Their job? To discover the facts about it, while staying completely neutral and value-free. This worldview naturally leads to really structured methods, like testing a hypothesis, often with numbers. Now, let's swap out those glasses for the interpretivist lens. This is way more like looking through a kaleidoscope. For an interpretivist, reality is subjective. There are multiple, shifting, beautiful patterns. Knowledge isn't just found. It's co-created through conversations and interactions. Values are seen as a totally normal part of the process, which leads to much more flexible research designs that are all about exploring meaning. And finally, there's the constructivist lens. Now, this is a subtle but really important jump from interpretivism. A constructivist would say reality isn't just subjective, it's actively built, constructed, by us through our experiences. And the researcher is part of that building process. Because of that, they have to be super self-aware, 
always examining their own role. This leads to methods that are really collaborative and dialogic. This table just lays it all out so clearly. You can literally trace the logic. Look at the positivist row. A belief in a single reality creates this domino effect that leads straight to a value-free structured approach. It shows you that these aren't just random ideas you can mix and match. They're coherent, interconnected worldviews. Okay, but so what? Why does any of this abstract philosophy stuff actually matter? Well, because these ideas have huge practical consequences for how a research study gets done. This is where the rubber really meets the road. So if you're an interpretivist or a constructivist, here's what it looks like in practice. Because you believe reality is complex, your research design can't be rigid. It has to be flexible and evolve. This totally changes the researcher's role from some distant observer to more of a collaborative partner. That, in turn, shapes your data collection. You're not looking for numbers. You're looking for deep, rich stories. And finally, your analysis isn't about proving a hypothesis. It's about listening to those stories and letting the themes emerge on their own. So here's the bottom line. As a researcher, you can't just pick your methods out of a hat because they seem cool or easy. You have to consciously understand and choose the paradigm that's guiding you. You have to find your stance and own it. Let's just boil this all down to three key things to take away. Number one, understand. Just recognize that your worldview shapes everything you do. Two, align. Make sure your methods actually make sense with your philosophy. They have to be in sync. And three, articulate it. Say it out loud. Clearly state your paradigm in your work so that everyone reading it knows exactly what pair of glasses you're wearing. And we'll end with a question for you to chew on. And this isn't just for researchers. For every single one of us, think about it. How do your own personal values, your own life experiences, your own personal paradigm shape what you accept as true out there in the world?